Hi, I'm Alex Queen, Assistant Editor of the American Journal of Medicine, and I'm here with Dr. Alpert, our Editor-in-Chief. And here we have an article about hearing loss management in personal um, sound amplifiers. What can you tell us about this article? Well, you know, um, Alex, when I first got this, I thought, oh, I don't know about hearing aids in the Internal Medicine Journal. When I read it, I said, this is a really important article, not just for the doctors, but also even for patients to read. It turns out, first of all, two-thirds of people over the age of 70 have significant hearing loss, enough so that it disturbs their normal daily activity. And we know that people who have hearing loss, there's a whole series of bad things that happen. It's much more common for them to be depressed, much more common for them to have cognitive loss. So it is important to have a hearing aid. However, Medicare doesn't cover hearing aids, and hearing aids, the whole thing with the adjustments and so forth, often are five to six thousand dollars. It turns out less than a third of people who need a hearing aid can really afford to get one. So it turns out, of course, industry became aware of this, and they're producing personal hearing aids, not as sophisticated as the small ones that you put into your ear, but quite good um, for anywhere from two hundred and fifty to three hundred and fifty dollars. Now they're not so small, so you often have to wear them behind your ear. On the other hand, they do work and they can be adjusted from smartphones. If the person can't adjust it themselves, I'm sure they can find a teenage grandkid who can help them make the adjustment um, with the smartphone so that they really do work and they are an important um, adjunct because hearing loss is a huge disability in, in, in our older population. And the nice thing about this article is it has a whole series of pictures and descriptions of each of the ones uh, of these special agents that can be bought. That's right. So what's, what, um, what do we have to say to our clinicians? Well, I would say to our clinicians that maybe they ought to copy this article and give it to their patients when they... Usually it's not hard to tell your patient has hearing loss uh, because they're not hearing what you're saying when you speak in a normal tone. By the way, they had also a wonderful little table of how to deal with people who have hearing loss. First of all, speak to them face to face, number one. Secondly, don't speak louder, speak more slowly. And if they don't understand you, don't just repeat what you said, but rephrase it. And then they'll get right. the clues about that. So uh, this was, a, I thought, a tremendously useful article that probably should be distributed to families who have older uh, members who are not having a, a good hearing and who are, in a sense, withdrawing the, uh, because of the lack of, of hearing. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you.